Writing a Critical Analysis Analysis. What does it mean to analyze a work of art? Analysis is the process of figuring out why the artist made the choices visible in the work and what those choices create in terms of aesthetics, expression, and meaning. Analysis is well-reasoned opinion and critical analysis is a persuasive argument. It is a compelling explanation of how one might understand the work of art. Support for the opinions expressed in the analysis comes from the description. Analysis can follow description. Description. Here is what the work of art looks like. Here is what I see. Analysis. Here is what I think about what I see. Description. Milton Avery painted a beach scene with two girls seated on the shore and a swimmer in the water. Pink sand, inky water, and a rocky shoreline below green trees create foreground, middle, and background. The color palette is generally cool, almost icy. Analysis. The composition and the motion of the swimmer all emphasize the horizontality of the image. Despite the clear demarcation of receding space, the painting appears flat. The same pale blue used in the distant rocky shoreline appears in the blanket-like form beneath one girl. The white in the suit and towel in the foreground is comparable to the white that highlights the boulders in the background. The key area of interest is the swimmer, who is painted in glowing red over a yellow ground. The red is all the more vivid because its complement, green, harmonized by the same yellow ground, fills the upper zone. Both motion and intense hue draw the viewer's eye to this figure. Sometimes analysis is combined with description. Analysis. There is a certain expression or feeling in this work because Description. These details or techniques create that feeling or idea. Description and analysis together. While Mark Rothko claimed his abstractions made no reference to the visible world, many people sense landscape, architectural, and even figurative forms in his oblongs of complex and shifting color. In this painting, areas of green, black, and purple reach toward the edge of a brilliant yellow field, creating a space inside which the viewer is isolated within his or her experience. The enfolding darkness of the black area confirms that feeling of isolation. The gleam of orange at the top and strokes of green at the bottom evoke the disappearance of the day or even, in Proust's words, the remembrance of things past. What follows is a general guideline for analyzing a work of art, a process rather than specific steps. Let's go back to the painting we started with, Gustave Caillebotte's Le Pont de Europe, 1876. In our description, we summarized the composition and noted important details. We can see as well how there is opinion in that description. On the Europe Bridge in Paris, above the railroad tracks leading to the Gare Saint-Lazare, a well-dressed couple strolls toward the viewer. White clouds enliven the blue sky, suggesting a pleasant day. Sun casts shadows on the pavement through a crisscross pattern of iron girders that looms above the bridge. Elegant buildings are visible in the distance. A working class fellow looks over the railing, perhaps at the train tracks below, and a brown and white dog trots down the bridge in the foreground. Having described the painting, we now want to analyze the choices Kayabot made consider their expressive effects and meanings. We want to get into the artist's mind. The point of view is that of someone not far behind the dog. If you are the viewer, where exactly are you? 
What are you doing? What are you feeling? The painting has a snapshot quality, as though it were a photograph taken at random. Think, though, about what the concept of the snapshot might have been in 1876. Don't forget that photography exploded in popularity and photographic technology advanced dramatically after 1840. Here is Honoré Daumier's cartoon, Nadar Elevating Photography to the Height of Art, published May 25, 1862. The neutral palette of grays, creams, beiges, and blues is naturalistic and fresh. It captures an impression of this moment. The brushwork creates a pleasing, almost sketch-like texture, as though the image were painted quickly and on the spot. Did you know? The group of artists who became known as the Impressionists held their first exhibition in 1874. Painting en plein air, or in the open air, on the spot, away from the studio, was popularized by the French landscape painters of the Barbizon School in the 1840s and 1850s. The invention of the collapsible aluminum paint tube in 1841 inspired artists to take their canvases into the out of doors. Brush manufacture also improved, and use of the palette knife became commonplace. The effect is casual, realistic. It evokes that sense of modern life the poet Charles Baudelaire believed was essential to modern art. Charles Baudelaire, an excerpt from The Painter of Modern Life, 1859. And so away he goes, hurrying, searching. But searching for what? This solitary artist, gifted with an active imagination, ceaselessly journeying across the great human desert, has an aim loftier than that of a mere flaneur, an aim more general, something other than the fugitive pleasure of circumstance. He is looking for that quality which you must allow me to call modernity. He makes it his business to extract from fashion whatever element it may contain of poetry within history, to distill the eternal from the transitory. By modernity, I mean the ephemeral, the fugitive, the contingent, the half of art whose other half is the eternal and the immutable. So what do we do now? We have described the painting, Gustave Caillabot's Pont de l'Europe, 1876. We have analyzed the painting. It is now time to interpret it. What do you think Caillabot was trying to achieve in this work, to say about art or life? In other words, what is this painting all about? Be patient. We will discuss interpretation in the next video.